All right, that time of year, study ball is back. And so the first one is going to come on the number one overall pick, Caleb Williams, in his first action here against the Bills. So let's dive on in. All right, so something that a lot of teams now are running these pure progression type plays. So you guys know I'm not a huge fan. It's going to be a quick out. It's going to be a quick cross. It's going to be a shallow and then an under out here. So it really becomes one and then probably two, three, or vice versa there, two, four. And we're telling young quarterbacks to read and see if they're open, read and see if they're open. So we're asking them to see their receiver instead of seeing coverage, which is what I don't like about them. Because you're gonna see on this particular play, the Bills drop a safety down here. He gets outside leverage right now on this quick out, I'd like to see Caleb off of that right now. Get off of that right now, find this backer, see what he does, and you're gonna see on this particular play, if he gets off of it right here, okay? Can you see it? What, what do we got? We got a safety outside this out, no chance to throw that. Get off of it, find this guy. This guy gets depth, you get here quick, you got a chance to hit that one right there. Again, not gonna be a huge gainer, but he gets back there a little bit late. By that time, the defender is chasing it. Now, we'd love for him to get all the way through this, really to number four on the outside because it's open. But again, a lot to ask for a young quarterback, his first pass uh, in the NFL. Things are moving fast. You're nervous. But I would like to see him eliminate this quicker and then get to this guy. And a big part of that is not asking these guys to just do pure progression. See if this guy's open, then see if the next guy's open. No, see the coverage, he jumps outside, boom, I'm right back to the inside and I play the game faster and I think we get a completion right here. Gets out on the move, does a nice job of throwing that one away. Okay, I think he does a nice job right here. So as we come back, you're gonna see, they just run mirrored routes, okay? Mirrored routes meaning we're going to run a seven stop over here. We're going to run a seven. So a seven is a corner and faking the corner. And then we're running a stop here. Okay. Then we're going to run a guy over the middle. So we get corners off here. So these corners to drop. Okay. Now we get backs. This one goes to the flat. This top back here actually gets out here and hooks. You're going to see why that's an issue. I don't know if he's supposed to hook because he ends up kind of falling outside the numbers, but we need him to get to the flat right now. But this forces Caleb to have to play the game. Okay, so he comes back and he's looking to his right. Okay, so he's going to be reading this outside linebacker right here. If this back gets to the flat, now we've got to pull high low off of that guy. The back instead does this, right? He comes running up here, allowing this guy to hold off the seven stop and hold leverage on him so we don't really have anything. Now, if he stays to that side, he could still dump it to the back right here and has a nice little gain right there. But if he's expecting that guy to go to the flat and get a pull, he doesn't get it. So he works all the way back to the seven stop over here. Now, same thing. We're reading this defender. It's third and long. These guys are dropping deep. But because this guy gets out to the flat, watch what it does to this defender. Pulls that defender out. Caleb does a nice job of working that guy. And then boom, right back here to his seven stop and hits it right there at the sticks. Really, really well done. Going through his progression to the right, back to the left, holding in the pocket and driving a great throw. All right, so here we go again. Basically the same play that we saw. This guy's a little bit deeper here. Gonna clear this out. And then what are we gonna do? We're gonna run this in and the shallow. So basically the same as the first play. Remember on the first play, guy jumped outside leverage there and he didn't get off of it fast enough, missed what was coming. You're gonna see the same sort of thing play out here. What do we got? We lost leverage. He's running it out. Defender is outside of him. Get off of it. Get off of it right now. Gotta see that leverage. Don't sit there and wait to see if he wins because, again, playing a tough game, 
We need to get off here. Now, nothing really comes open. They play this pretty well on the backside, but we know we've got runaway routes against man right here, and especially because what? What are they doing? They're dropping the safety down into what we call a robber position. So he's helping them in the middle of the field, thus the reason we have outside leverage, outside leverage, outside leverage. We're feeding them all inside into our robber, so we got to be able to see that quick if we're Caleb and get off of that and work to the shallow. And again, we don't get a lot of separation. Nobody's really open, but you see he's stuck on this outside breaking route against outside leverage, and now he just forces a throw that easily could have been intercepted right here, but we've seen it twice now. Got to get off of those things. Got to feel the leverage and work to your next guy. All right, something Caleb is always going to be good at is getting out on the move and on these naked bootlegs. So naked bootleg right here. We bring the receiver back underneath here to the flat. Does a great job right here. I'm a guy, now he's very creative and can make a lot of plays on the run, but I'm a guy, when you run a naked, the idea is to fool the defense, get them moving, and really just hit a flat on the backside. We're trying to slow the defenders down in the run game so they're not over-pursuing. If they do, we're trying to just get them out the backside, throw a quick flat, get a play, and make the defense think. So right here, he gets the flat, take it. Take it. Take it right now. You got the flat, take it right now. Now he could have prolonged this and ran out there and maybe played uh, with his feet a little bit, tried to get the big play, but I love this. Does a great job of turning his hips and attacking the throw. Even though it's a seven yard throw, I love that he attacks the throw with his body because that's what helps to add accuracy to things. Boom, and now the ball, as he's coming down, the ball goes right where his body's taking it. He's setting his line right here to the front side of DJ Moore. Boom, ball's right on the money, keeps him running. We get ourselves a first down, but I love it. Come out, you got it, take it. Okay, so we're gonna come out with another naked. What did I say? Come out, if you got it, take it. To me, take that one. He comes out of this, that's the throw. Now, he's going to make a special throw right here. Something we're gonna see from Caleb Williams, something that's gonna wow us, but you never wanna pass up an open receiver in hopes that another receiver comes open. You don't have a lot of things on these nakeds. Remember what the nakeds are for. Over pursued by the defense, boom. Get the ball out and make the defense think. To me, this is the throw to make right here. As he comes out, that's it. Man, you've got all kinds of space. First down, take it right now. Now, does a great job of little pump fake, pulling the corner down, and maybe he felt like there was nobody else out there except the corner, so he could mess with them a little bit. Does a great job with that. And then, boom, one of those special throws on the move, really, really well done to get the big play. I'd still like to see him take the underneath one, the quick throw, because it's there, but hard to argue when you make the big play on the back end. Okay? All right, so I see this all around the league as well. Okay, so we're gonna run a corner and then a flat, okay? So this is what I call the corner concept in QB Confidential. Uh, so it's the high-low on the outside. We're gonna read the outside defender, which becomes the corner here. And one thing I see around the league is these are more pure progression plays for the quarterback. So what that means is they're telling him to come out and look at this first and then get over the top. I don't like it. I would rather my quarterback come back and say, I know when I get the right coverage, a cover two look, I've got a high low read off of this defender. And I like my quarterback to take his drop to connect to the deep throw. Okay. Why is that important? Because you want to connect to the deep throw. You want to be set and ready for the big play and force this guy to have to make a decision. So if I'm set for the deep one and he wants to fade, 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 I can always get back to my flat right here. But what happens is when we set too quick to come out here for the flat, we oftentimes take ourselves into the quick throw because we're trying to force the flat open instead of allowing the defense to truly dictate what we're doing. And you'll see what I'm talking about right here, okay? So you see how quick he sets? Okay, so we're reading this outside defender. He sets quick, he's gonna take the flat, this defender's going to come off and come up and play the flat right there, drop ball, but he's gonna play it quick. 
If Caleb drops back and sets deeper, allowing this route to come open, one of two things is going to happen. Either A, he's going to see this guy start to drive the flat and he's going to get the big throw over the top, or B, as he drops deeper, he's going to force this guy to drop deeper. As he looks to the corner out or looks to the outside, that guy's going to drop deeper. So even when we drop it off here to the back, that cornerback is not going to be driving. But here, we make it easy on the defense because we don't even really make him cover the corner route because he gets the flat open, I get set, I throw it, and we allow him to basically play both of them. We let him take away the corner because we never were patient enough to see it. And he was still in a position to cover the flat because the timing element of it, we didn't force him to have to make that decision. Always want to tie our feet to the route. Okay, good job right here. All right, we got a two-man look. Two high safeties, and you see it. Man, 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 man. Okay, so we'll have a couple two-man beaters on this play. Okay, so we get a little one-on-one -on -one here, stick go here we could take that up and over we could throw the back shoulder there if we like it or we've got the one step runaway right here that could be another man beater for us but something we always were told as quarterbacks even me who couldn't run is that when a team goes to two man they have no one to account for the quarterback so all of these guys are turning and running their backs are to the quarterback there's nobody left in two man because of two high safeties that if you get two man pick at your two man beaters if they're not there tuck it and run it's exactly what he does right here okay everybody's running with their guy there's nobody to account for caleb williams nice big run peek at your guys you don't like it take off and especially you got like caleb athletic enough to make some big plays okay another naked bootleg boom get turned okay so this is another one that i would say just give it to your flat right now if you're going to give it to him give it to him right now turn the corner give it to him uh, because you've got a lot of space, almost 10 yards right here. Give it to him quick and allow him to make his one-on-one -on -one move to the outside. Again, you're a good athletic quarterback. You break contain. There's nobody over here. I'm not going to argue if you try to press this a little bit. Once you've broken contain and you feel like there's nobody really out here, you can kind of play this high-low game uh, off of that outside defender if you know that you've broken contain because your legs become a third option for you. So I would tell most of my quarterbacks, come out, if you get this much space, put it on your receiver right now and let him go one-on-one. -on -one. If he's got the ball in his hands and he's turning, right? He's got one-on-one -on -one right here. Makes a guy miss, he gets a touchdown, okay? You feel like that guy's screaming down and you get the edge like Caleb did here. All right, now we can play the game a little bit, okay? We get him to come down. Now we can take the over-the-top throw on the move to our guy, I'd like to see Caleb, instead of going this way, go this way, okay? Come down towards the line of scrimmage. Make them feel like you become a run option, okay? Why, what does that do? What it does is it starts to mess with this guy. You come downhill, this guy says, oh shoot, do I have to come off of this and start playing Caleb on the run? Now it allows my flat to gain leverage and I could pop it out there to that guy. The other thing it does, let's say this guy is out here and I start to attack the line of scrimmage, now it's the next guy. Does the next guy drop off for the crosser or does he come down to play Caleb because Caleb could run it and now it puts them in a bind. So instead of stringing it out to the sideline where you allow this guy to be able to play both of you and this guy to be able to drop back, threaten the line of scrimmage a little bit more with your athleticism but nice job on the second level throw right here. Okay. All right. So we're getting kind of a quarters coverage right here. Okay. We could call this two on the back side. Could be press four. But we've got a cover four shell to the front side, meaning the corner is off and the safety is playing a quarter to the front side. Okay. We're going to run double seams right here. So we get a stop. And then on the back side, we're gonna run this little return right here, okay? So quarterbacks, it's really tough when you've got two tight safety. So it's not cover two where these guys are getting wide, but it's more of a quarters look to the front side. So when we've got 
those guys staying tight uh, on the front side, it makes it really, really hard to hit these seams. This safety's back here for the inside seam. This guy holds leverage, so we can't ever bend and get across his face. So anytime I get a quarters look on the double seam concept, what I do is I go right out to my one-on-one -on -one right now. In, the backers are, are taught to play match coverage and hold to the inside, not let guys get inside of them, which gives us a nice one-on-one -on -one to the outside. So I'd love to see Caleb understand this safety is staying a little bit tighter. This corner is off. Come back, okay? Know that you're probably not going to get it and get right out here to your one-on-one -on -one against quarters and you've got that throw right there, okay? He looked inside, which a number of quarterbacks will look inside and what he's trying to do is work through his progressions and get back here to this return on the backside, but return doesn't win. Now he gets caught in a bind and it's another reason why I like to make the game as simple as possible, as quickly as possible. So if these safeties don't widen, giving me a shot down the middle, those guys stay tight, get out here to your one-on-one, -on -one, and then you can work from there. But I don't like to depend on an outside receiver running a return route to be my winner on the play. And just little things that he's got to grow in. Part of the reason why I do these things is hopefully it gets back to guys like Caleb and young quarterbacks to understand, hey, this guy's tucked inside, that seam is always going to be hard. Backside safety is tight, that one's going to be hard, especially without having somebody clear out that backside safety. So those are going to be hard based on the look. Here's the best and easiest throw. Get out to it right now and get a winner. All right, so some good things on tape, some things he's got to grow with, but not a bad debut in his first game for Caleb Williams.